Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome to my channel, a channel all about hand embroidery. We do some different projects. We look at lots of techniques. We've got a whole stitch library with lots of stitches. We review some books. We've got some giveaways. So there's so much going on. So do stick with me. So I know lots of you are supporting the channel with your channel memberships and your patron um, support as well. And also the super thanks. You click the super thanks button if you enjoy a video and you like it. And people have clicked that super thanks button below um, and donated to us so thank you very much if you've done that so this week I want to say thank you to Agnes Sharon and Karen who have all donated that way it's much appreciated the money goes into equipment for the studio um, and some more lighting we've had recently as well so um, it really is appreciated thank you so we've been looking at stock work embroidery a lot recently, or you might know it as raised embroidery. So any three dimensional embroidery that comes off the surface of the fabric. And we've done a few videos on that now. Recently done the teddy bear, this little one up here. If you want to have a go at him, we'll put a link to the, that video up. You can follow my step by step instructions on how to make him. And if you are making one and you want to share him on YouTube on my channel, then do send him in to me. I'll put a link to the email address you can send your images to in the description below this video. We've had one in already from Pauline. Thank you, Pauline. He's really, really super. It'd be great to have a little teddy bear picnic display. So um, do send those to me if you're going to have a go at the teddy bear project. So what I wanted to do today is to look at another project that you joined in with um, and we did this little dragonfly project. So this is one of the first stump work videos I made. We made this little dragonfly, showed you how to paint the background and how to form the dragonfly. And lots of you wanted to have a go at this and you did so and very beautifully. Um, and we made a video on some of these dragonflies and they were still coming in so I've got some more that I want to show you um, and alongside those as well I've got some more stump work projects that you have been working on so today's video is all about your work. Okay, so let's dive straight in and we're going to start with Kelly and I have to apologise to Kelly because she sent her dragonfly in for the first video and I somehow managed to miss it and didn't put it in and I felt really bad and Kelly said it was fine but <laughs> I still felt really bad, Kelly. So we're going to start with yours because it's really, really beautiful dragonfly that you worked here and you had a go at the background that I showed in the video as well. So we did a hand-painted, hand-drawn background and lots of you interpreted the background in different ways and that's really wonderful. It's what I love about doing this sort of thing is that I give you an idea and I show you how I might do it and then you can take it and run with it and do whatever you like with it um, and Kelly has done the background she's had a go at this background and it's really beautiful so she's got painted um, on there I don't know if it's painted or if it's using pencil you can use colored pencils on fabric they work really well and done the ribbon work for the leaves at the front so just adds a little bit of dimension to it to do those different techniques together and we'll talk about that a little bit later as well and then Kelly's beautiful dragonfly on here is gorgeous wings they look really really lovely and what i love about kelly's is it's really subtle my pieces sometimes they can come out a little bit dark um not dark as in a shade of dark not a bit dark if that makes any sense um and i'd like to lighten them up a little bit sometimes i get going quite heavy with my colors um, and kelly's done that beautifully and the background on this one is really stunning i think just those subtle colors blending together just makes a bit more interesting than maybe just a plain background fabric so I would like to make mine a little bit lighter um, and a little bit more delicate if I can but you have to go with what what you know and what you do it's your own style but Kelly's a super super delicate so um, well done Kelly it's really really lovely and Kelly also sent me a picture of her daisy now I know this isn't stunt work but um, this was another piece that she had done so this is my gold work daisy video we do have a set on how to do this this daisy if you're interested in the gold work embroidery technique and again kelly has taken her style into this as well and which is what i really love now i did mine on a really strong purple background and it was purple and it was gold and it was like <laughs> and kelly's just toned it all down a bit which i really like actually and she's done a really subtle background on this gold work daisy and look how delicate it looks gold work can be a little bit of an on off technique and be a bit in your face if you're not careful with the gold threads because they are nice and shiny and you put them all together and they can be quite bling um, and this is a beautiful delicate one Kelly the way you've worked this on this background so um, well done on both of those and really really beautiful thank you for sharing 
So the next dragonfly we have up is from Martha. Thank you very much, Martha. Um, this one is really, really lovely. I love the scale of this one. Um, and she said, this is my first attempt at a stump, at the stump work dragonfly. She said, I didn't have the correct size bead for the eye, so I just used what I had. I'm, I'm always doing that, Martha. You don't have to have this size bead for this size project. Root around, see what you've got. And that soon changes something a little bit and just makes it your own and gives it a bit of personality, especially things that have got faces and eyes. Um, they they can get so much personality from the way you do that. And I think those beads are absolutely fine, actually. I really like them. And I love the scale of it. It really focuses in on, on the dragonfly. It makes the dragonfly the real feature of the piece by putting it in that smaller frame. It's just such a simple difference to make, just to change the size of the frame. It suddenly changes the whole scale of it. And, and he's so vibrant as well. And he's got an extra little detail on it, Martha, that I really love. And he's got his little gold trail of where he's been flying. Um, super little detail, really nice. Um, well done, Martha. He's fantastic. So this lovely piece is from Jill. Now, Jill is the only person so far that has actually swapped my image over. I did the plants on the left and the dragonfly on the right, and Jill's changed hers around. And again, just such a simple device just to change something up a little bit. And you'll notice as well that the bulrushes have disappeared and she's replaced them with this beautiful, what sort of looks like a flower meadow, really. Um, but got that same um, composition in it. So some plant coming up the side for the, the dragonfly to sort of connect with. So that's really important with your backgrounds to think, how does your embroidery sit in the background? They should be two things that work together, not two separate things that work apart. So Jill's done that really beautifully with this, this amazing wildflower meadow going on. And the details at the bottom of this, I think there's beads in there and loads of stitching. It gives it a really nice grounding to put the whole piece on. The dragonfly is flying, but the environment he's flying in is well and truly grounded. And it just makes for a really beautiful composition. Really great choice of background fabric as well, Jill. Just got a little print on it that suggests a few more plants and it just all ties in together. So just these little changes, you can really put some stamp on it and make it your own. Um, thank you for sharing that, Jill. It's really beautiful. So we've got another one here and this one is from Darren and this one is so different. And I, as I mentioned previously, I love seeing how you change these designs. You take something that I've taken and you run with it and you do your own thing with it. And this one for Darren is doing just that. Darren says, um, a bit wobbly, but I really enjoy doing this. It doesn't look very wobbly to me, Darren. It looks absolutely beautiful. And I love the colour scheme of this. The dragonfly wings have got a kind of a blue background. I think they're see-through. I'm pretty sure that's a see-through fabric, but it's blue. And with the gold edging, it just is absolutely stunning. Blue and gold. Um, you can't go wrong with blue and gold. If you're doing something in gold work, you need a colour stick blue with it. <laughs> blue or turquoise because they look so beautiful together and that just um, really makes his wings stand out just that beautiful blue background and look at these amazing uh, bulrushes as well in kind of reds and oranges and golds completely different color really to what I did them um, but they're absolutely stunning sort of an autumnal kind of feel almost um, and just on a slightly different color background as well so again just these little changes throughout really putting your stamp on it um, and I love that one there really beautiful thanks so much for sending it so we're going to look at dragonflies now in a little bit of context. So this beautiful piece here is from Rebecca, who very modestly says, I'm a very amateur embroidery, but I think you can see from this that Rebecca's doing herself a little bit of a disservice. This is a really stunning piece and it's got so many little details in this. The more you look at this, the more you see. So we'll try and go over some of them. So we've got little stump wet details in here. So if you look at the tree, there's some beautiful, exquisite little birds flying around the tree. Um, is even a bat hanging off it. I love bats. I think they're brilliant. A little bat hanging off the tree. And we've got a bumblebee in the flower as well on the other side. And the butterflies in the flowers too. And then if you move around to the bottom, I think there's a little ants at the bottom. The little black things. Ants or bugs or something like that. Absolutely um, um, amazing detail in it. Really lovely. And there's a little hedgehog under the tree as well and the toadstools. And then the dragonfly is sitting right in the middle. Now, I don't know what scale this is, Rebecca. If that dragonfly is anywhere near the size of the dragonfly, I did this piece is enormous. Um, but he's just in the middle and just sitting nicely, nicely framed by the woodland and by the tree and by the things underneath. Beautiful composition. They're really lovely little details in that is so beautiful. And then something very um, along the same lines is this beautiful box. So this is um, uh, covered in lots of stump work. 
um, techniques throughout this box and you can see that they go around all the sides as well it's not just one flat piece now she's taken it around the sides of the box and taken this oak tree around and we've got some wrap beads that's a stump work technique and you can wrap some threads around beads and they make great berries and acorns and things like that we've got some wired shapes so some of the leaves are wired that have come up away from the surface and that's exactly the same technique technique as the dragonfly wings um, you just don't do it in a sheer fabric you can do it in a green fabric or you can stitch it lots of different ways of doing the leaves there um, and I think there is some needle lace in there Rebecca on the acorns possibly at the bottom can't quite see and the little butterfly standing out as well so a real heirloom pieces both of these pieces are real heirloom pieces and got such character in them um, really really uh, fantastic pieces got one now from Gale that's done on a slightly different fabric so this has been done on a canvas fabric so your canvas you would normally do needlepoint on and Gail's doing something quite freestyle on this and um, she said I've sent a picture of the start of my Bugs project called it Mr Bumblebee um, for obvious reasons um, and it's got it's going to have on it some stump work and some gold work techniques and she says she's going to use up the little bits that she's collected in her box and um, believing that you can make a nice work out of scraps of, of materials you have. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy lots of things for this. You can have a rummage around, as we mentioned earlier, with the eyes um, and find some, some pieces that you've got. Think, what can I make out of this? And this is what Gail's doing on this piece. And the canvas is interesting because it's got holes in it. So normally you would follow the holes and you get something quite rigid. It's a bit harder to do something freestyle on this. So it'd be really interested to see how this one comes out, Gail, because there's lots of exciting things happening already with the gold. I can see that and the pattern that's on it behind. So really looking to see how this one goes. So we've got a few dragonflies going on now on the same piece. This one is from Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. This is actually a design from uh, Fabi Riley. Um, it's called the Jackie Magic Needle Book. It's magic because you can open a needle book that way and you can shut it and you can open it that way. It's quite clever and you can have um, open it different ways depending on what needle that you want to get to. Um, and you can see the dragonfly designs all over it. Now this is tens, these designs, I've had a little look at them. They're cross stitch designs mainly, but they have some stump work techniques in them. So beautiful way of mixing your techniques up. Stump work because you're making different elements and you're putting them on. You can put it on anything. You can put it on canvas like Gail is doing. Um, you can put it with cross stitch as well. You can really great one to mix your techniques with. And this has got some cross stitch ones on. It's got some flat ones on it as well but you can also see this little stump work one on it as well I hope and it's got the wings that stand up from the surface of the fabric so you don't just have to do it on something flat this one turns over as well so you be a bit careful with how you you um you look after it and Amanda did say she wasn't sure she was going to use it it was too nice to use so you would have to be a bit careful with it but a really interesting idea I think to have things on both sides and to mix those techniques up as well um so fabulous piece Amanda thank you so this beautiful piece here is from Paula and I first met my lovely friend Paula when I was in Portland in Oregon years and years ago and we did lots of stitching together and Paula is still stitching away. It's lovely to see that Paula and Paula has been doing this class. So this is an RSN stump work project um, and it's got some wired shapes in it. It's got some padding in it. It's why you can see that in the figure um, and some lots of needle lace techniques as well. Um, she says she's really proud of it. She says a needle lace needs a, a bit of work. Um, needle lace always needs a bit of work. I thought that when I did my teddy bears. I thought you could always do it better. Um, but one thing I love about hand embroidery is those little parts of it, actually, the, the slight, I call them slight imperfections, because if you make everything perfect, to be honest, I think it's a little bit dull after a while. And hand embroidery is is like handwriting you know you're putting your own stamp on it you're putting your own style on it and your handwriting your hand embroidery is what makes something a little bit different so my advice to everybody who is stitching is to embrace that about hand embroidery brace those tiny little things that maybe not are not perfect um because that's what truly makes it your own and just really enjoy the process so you can see the leaves on that there's the wired shapes again these ones have been stitched and then wired and then cut out and applied and the figure is a really interesting one so we sort of touched on that a little bit with the teddy bear project a little bit of padding underneath um the teddy bear while well, the teddy bear is made of felt but he's got some felt padding underneath him and that's the sort of start 
of the padding process and you can take that a lot further so you can sculpt the body in the padding and then you make the little needle lace shapes um, so his clothing is all needle lace there and that's applied over the top of the padding to make this form of the figure so it's getting quite technical when you get to that sort of level of it um, but this is a really lovely design and a great way to have a go at these different um, different uh, stump work embroidery techniques so thank you all for sending your pieces in. I really do love to see what other people are working on. You can be um, a little bit isolated sometimes when you work on your own. You don't know what everyone else is doing. And it's wonderful to see that you are all busy stitching away. If you are interested in stump work and you haven't had a go yet, or you want to have a go at the teddy bears, our stump work playlist is up here. And that's got the dragonflies in it. It's got the teddy bears in it. It's got the wire shapes in it. So do go and check that one out if you're interested in this technique. Thank you everybody for sharing your work with me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you have. And then we will see you next time.